Welcome back to Embryology with Anatob. In our last lesson, we discussed about gametogenesis. Well, in today's lesson, we will be discussing about oogenesis. Oogenesis is a process whereby oogonia differentiate into mature oocytes. Maturation of oocytes can be divided in two stages maturation before birth and maturation at puberty let's begin with maturation before birth once primordial germ cells arrive in the gonad of a genetic female they differentiate into oogonia once oogonia are formed they undergo a number of mitotic divisions and by the end of the third month the oogonia become arranged in clusters surrounded by a layer of flat epithelial cells known as follicular cells. These follicular cells originate from the surface epithelium covering the ovary. During the next few months, oogonia increase rapidly in number and enlarges to form primary oocytes and by the fifth month of prenatal development, the total number of germ cells in the ovary reaches its maximum, which is estimated at about 7 million. By the seventh month, cell death begins to occur and majority of oogonia will degenerate, leaving about 2 million primary oocytes. Now the remaining 2 million primary oocytes begin to undergo meiosis. A primary oocyte combined with its surrounding follicular cells is known as primordial follicle. About the period when the primary oocyte enters the prophase stage of meiotic division, follicular cells surrounding the primary oocytes begin to release a small peptide called oocyte maturation inhibitor also known as the OMI. Now the OMI arrests the meiotic division at the diplotin stage of prophase so that the primary oocytes do not finish their first meiotic division before puberty is reached. Now let's talk about maturation at puberty. The total number of primary oocytes at birth is estimated to vary from 700,000 to 2 million. During childhood, most oocytes become atretic. Only approximately 40,000 will be present by the beginning of puberty and fewer than 500 will be ovulated. Once puberty begins, 15 to 20 primary oocytes begin to mature each month, although only one of these reaches full maturation to become an oocyte. Maturation of primary oocytes undergo three stages. The pre stage, the antral stage, and the pre-ovulatory stage. In the pre stage, surrounding follicular cells change from flat epithelial cells to form a stratified cuboidal epithelium called granulosa cells, which will go ahead to form the zona pellucida around the primary oocyte. Together, they form the primary follicle. Surrounding connective tissue cells also differentiate into theca folliculi, which are responsive to luteinizing hormone. In the antral stage, central fluid filled space called the antrum forms between granulosa cells. The follicles are now called secondary follicles. Granulosa cells surrounding the oocyte remain intact and form the cumulus uthorus. Now to the pre-ovulatory stage. When the secondary follicle is mature, a surge in the luteinizing hormone induces completion of meiosis one. 
two haploid cells are formed within the follicle but they are unequal in size. One of the daughter cells receives far less cytoplasm than the other and forms the first polar body, which will not go ahead to form an ovum. The other haploid cell is known as a secondary oocyte. Both daughter cells then undergo meiosis too. The first polar body will replicate to give two polar bodies while the secondary oocyte is arrested at the metaphase stage of meiosis two, about three hours prior to ovulation. Now, if a sperm penetrates the secondary oocyte, the second meiotic division is completed and most cytoplasm is again retained by one cell, the fertilized oocyte and the other, the second polar body. That will be all for now guys. Now if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, share and leave us a comment. Thank you. In our next lesson, we will be discussing about spermatogenesis.